Lena, thank you. Suicide is now the second leading cause of death for kids ages 10 to 14, but mental health advocates say California doesn't even have the hospital beds or enough doctors and therapists to treat these kids in crisis. Our Christine Lazar joins us now. And Christine, you spoke to families where this is really a life or death situation. I can't imagine the impact. Yeah, I mean, you essentially have parents who are being told to turn their homes into hospitals oh. and care for these kids because there's not enough beds in the psychiatric wards of these hospitals for the young kids, and they are getting younger and younger. And imagine just having a six-year-old threatening to take his own life and being told there is no one to treat him, or making hundreds of phone calls to therapists and not getting a single return call. It's happening across the nation and right here at home. And experts say if we don't fix this broken system, children will die preventable deaths. He was crawling out of his skin from the inside out. A six-year-old boy in crisis, his mother desperate to get him to a doctor after he threatened to take his own life. Which for a six-year-old is absolutely devastating um, to hear him saying things like, I want to die, I'm going to kill myself. I mean, just vernacular that I didn't even know he had. En route to the doctor that morning, Andrew, whose last name his parents asked us not to use, was not only a threat to himself, but to her as well even while strapped in his car seat. On the 405 freeway, he has me by the hair. I'm trying to like navigate off the freeway with my head back, like hardly able to see the road, and he was just screaming. Andrew's doctor said he needed to be hospitalized, but the family was told there were no pediatric psychiatric beds available. You kind of feel handcuffed by the system in some right? as far as like, you know, we, we are in desperate need for your help and it can't be given to us. Andrew's parents say they were told they could either sit in the ER and pray a bed opened up or they could take their son home. The recommendation was that we treat our home like a psych ward, take away all of the knives, take away all the blankets. And move their other son out of the house. For safety reasons, he just could not control his body from attacking. After 48 hours at home, Andrew was stable, but there have been more threats of self-harm. Suicide is now the eighth leading cause of death for kids ages 5 to 11. From 2019 to 2020, the amount of mental health-related visits in hospitals in California jumped nearly 25% for kids 5 to 11 and more than 30% in kids 12 to 17. Experts blame the increase on isolation from the pandemic and the rise of social media. In California, there are not enough treatment centers for youth. According to data obtained by KCAL 9 News, only 16 of our 58 counties have inpatient psychiatric facilities with pediatric beds, with only 746 beds across the entire state of California. They recommend 50 beds per 100,000 kids. In California, we have 17 per 100,000. Lynn Morris is the CEO of D.D. Hirsch Mental Health Services. People don't often think of young kids having mental health issues, 5 to 11. We've had as young as an 8-year-old call our crisis line in suicidal distress. More and more parents are showing up in emergency rooms desperate for help. At Children's Hospital of Orange County, for example, we found a 50% increase in children with a psychiatric crisis come through its ER since the pandemic, seeing between 150 and 300 children per month. And the emergency departments are overwhelmed. Sometimes it can be up to three days sitting in an ED before the youth will even get in a bed if they even do. This mother took her 10-year-old son to a local hospital when he threatened to kill himself. After three days in the ER, waiting for a psychiatric bed. They said, well, if you're here for a week and we can't transfer you, we have to discharge you. And I said, what's the probability of me getting into one of these hospitals? And she goes, it's not very high. UCLA Medical Center in Westwood does provide inpatient psychiatric care for children. The beds are full or nearly full all the time. So your occupancy rate is like 95 plus percent. Dr. Carl Fleischer is a child psychiatrist at UCLA. Even before the pandemic, it was hard to get in to see people, but if you tried hard enough and made 100 phone calls, then eventually you could do it. 
and now everybody's so busy that they're not returning phone calls. I had to stop returning phone calls. When Rachel Rosen's 12-year-old daughter started having as many as a dozen panic attacks a day, so severe that she would become close to catatonic, Rosen couldn't find a single therapist without waiting months for an opening. The insurance company doesn't have anyone who has availability. No one I call has any availability. I can't afford really to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars really because you can't just do it for a few weeks. I would run out of money by the time it would start helping. What kind of wait lists are we seeing with therapists? Six months to a year. And can you imagine if a child had to wait that long for say chemotherapy if they had cancer? No. Dr. Bahare Tale, known as Dr. B, runs a diagnostic and counseling center for kids in Agora Hills. Her goal is to connect anyone who needs it to the help they can afford. I really hope parents don't lose hope. Keep trying. There are resources out there. Just keep calling. Don't give up. If you have to show up in person, do it. Don't be dismissed. Most therapists don't want to say no. And Dr. B says parents can also utilize nonprofits that offer mental health services if they can't afford care. Also, they can reach out to the mental health graduate programs at local universities looking for therapists who are just starting out and will be more available and affordable. Finally, California just passed AB 2317. It added a new licensing category for psychiatric residential treatment facilities for kids on Medi-Cal. And typically what that means is that they will now have more um, places that will be incentivized to have that kind of care now that they have that category. That will help kids in Medi-Cal. Obviously, that won't help kids with private insurance. It's a huge issue. I hear it not only from people who write in, but as a mom, yeah. I hear it from other mothers not being able to find therapists and even if they do paying hundreds if not thousands of dollars for care and it's not something you can just go once no no you have yeah. to keep going I mean I chose the, the whole system is broken it right? is. Uh, so you can't imagine that kids this little need that I type know. of care then you have the therapist situation where um, you know it, a lot of insurance doesn't cover it or they mm -hmm. may cover three or four to five times and then you're paying out of pocket. Right. So if you don't have money, you're also yeah. mm -hmm. and those in a tough spot. Yeah, and also in the, in the areas with underserved, you know, underinsured, they tend to have more trauma as well right. and need that. So it's just this terrible cycle. cycle. There are people, really good people here in LA who are trying to fix this, but it's gonna take money and it's gonna take attention. And we're all gonna have to say, even if you don't have children, because these kids are gonna be yeah. growing up, interacting with society, that we need to do something about this. And it's not just our physical health, it's our mental health. Mm -hmm. And again, can you imagine saying to that parent of a six-year-old, hey, their limb is hanging off or right. they have this huge gash Just go home head. and put a cast on it. Just go on home it. and Just put a Band-Aid on it. Yeah. That would never, never happen. And the numbers are staggering. They and are. Five years old. I know. I know. It breaks my heart. And, and we see it here in the news and people hear about it on yeah. the playgrounds and teachers are dealing with it. It's just a, a societal issue that we all need to care about. Well, you said it. Glad you brought attention to it. Mm -hmm. I think we need more of that. So, Christine, thank you. And there will be resources on our website, um, trying to give people as much resources as possible. And if anybody wants to email me, I will help you as well. I've helped some friends find. I've heard you on the phone. You did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, she really is on your side. Yeah, it's an important right. topic, and I'm here. Thank Christine, you. Thank you.